Hey guys, this is Redbone, your body, and if I told you to connect 15 levers to 15 outputs, you would most likely do something a bit like this. And if you turn on a lever, a redstone torch turns on, like that. But this is a very inefficient way of doing it, because I think we all agree with this. It's very expensive in survival, and then it's also not compact. It's really hard to make turns and bends and go up or down, and it probably lags your game quite a bit. Uh, not on this scale, but if you have long wires, it will lag your game because of the particles. So if you know a bit more about redstone, you might do something like this instead. This uses binary redstone to send 15 different signals uh, on just 4 wires. And then there's a decoder here that uh, figures out which combination uh, of the wires we have and turns on the correct output, so 7 and 7. So it works if we turn on C for example, this encoder gives this combination and we get C, obviously. So the encoder and the decoder sure are very big but the wire itself is pretty small, it's only 4 wires and that is very little compared to this. So if we are working with long distances, this is definitely a better solution. Of course it only works if one wire is turned on, one lever, if one input is turned on at a time. Otherwise, that's pretty much the only way of doing it. But let's assume only one lever is turned on at a time. But what this video is all about is that I found a way to compact these four wires into only one wire. And that one wire can carry this much information. And we have it right here. So the encoder, the encoder uh, is probably as compact as you can wish. This is the wire and this is the decoder. And it's really not that big. So B. I forgot to look which lever I turned on. B. So let's say 3. And we get 3. So we can also have the 0, but it's really not that useful because uh, you only use it if uh, in any moment one of these, exactly one of these, is going to be turned on. And. Uh, you probably don't want that, only if you're making computers or something. So E, that's correct. So as you might have guessed, I used analog redstone for this. It remembers what signal strength it was here. Uh, and I used comparators to keep that st signal strength and uh, this piece of redstone here has the same signal strength as this one. So we keep the signal strength and then uh, depending on how far it reaches we can decode the signal and figure out what lever was turned on there or what input. You can also have repeaters pointing into that. Before we had comparators we had to do something like this and this was really not that efficient because it's not a straight line, it's kind of diagonal and it's also pretty expensive, it takes 5 redstone per block or perhaps even more but this one takes 4 redstone per 4 blocks so um, it's 1 redstone per block and 1 quartz crystal per 4 blocks so uh, you'll have to, to keep that in mind and nobody really cares about the wood and the stone 
and I'm pretty sure you understand how the encoder works. The decoder is actually a bit more simple than it looks like. Uh, it just uh, repeats and um, each repeater turns on the output unless the next repeater is turned on as well. So that's why we have all this stuff up here. Say this repeater turns on the output here. It might be a bit hard to see. There's a redstone torch there, so it inverts the signal and then it's inverted here again. But the output is not on because the next repeater is on as well. And it goes, there's a redstone torch below this block here and that goes to this redstone torch and it uh, blocks the signal from there so this can be off it has to be on because of this and therefore the output is off even though this is on and right here where we have the output on uh, it is on because this is on and it uh, unpowers this redstone and the next repe repeater is off, so it doesn't power the previous line. And this is on. I hope that makes some sense. I'm pretty sure anyone could build this from just seeing it, but if you want a tutorial, here's a tutorial. So there's your tutorial. You can take a closer look at certain layers by pausing the video and all the repeaters are on one tick delay and I just noticed it. You don't need that. And similarly as we used several binary wires we can use several analog wires. So here I have an example of how much information or data you can carry with only two analog wires. It is a 16 by 16 square of levers. So this is the third one from that end and the fourth one from that end. And we can see the same output turned on here. So it does actually carry this much information with only two wires. And by the way, the decoder is uh, really huge. It could be more compact, I'm pretty sure. I just haven't put much effort into this. And you can see when the both wires are off, uh, this is turned on because one of the combinations is off-off and uh, that just happens to be this lamp. So if we turn this on, on or off, nothing really happens. It's kind of a shame. If you for some reason need to convert an analog signal into a binary signal you can use this guy here and I haven't put much effort into this either because I don't think it's very useful so I'm pretty sure it could be a lot more compact than this but this one is a lot more useful in my opinion it's a converter from binary to analog and it's very compact, it's only like two blocks tall, actually three blocks because of that. Uh, actually four blocks because of the redstone on top, so four blocks tall, but that's still pretty good. And it converts into a an analog signal here, and this is not a part on th of the converter, to be clear. This is just a decoder, so we can see which output we get. And the reason I say this is useful and not that is because uh, many randomizers and counters have a binary output and uh, if uh, you use something like that uh, you can either use a decoder like that uh, to get it to, uh, directly uh, from binary to uh, like decimal, the normal, uh, you get one input you know what I mean? Uh, or you can use this one 
uh, to convert it directly into analog and then use that for something. I'm sure you'll know what to use it for if you need it. By the way, you know my Minecraft name, Robot2121. I made that a long time ago, just so I could play. And I thought I can change my name whenever I want. But no, it turns out you actually need to buy another premium Minecraft account if you want to change your name. So I finally did that. I'm Redsbone1 now. Y'all can be happy. Lucky guy who is Redsbone. It's taken. That's about it. I hope you'll find a way to make your creations a lot more compact using this. You can download this part of the world from the video description below. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great day.